hello to all of those who fancy doing the C3L6 challenge um, next Friday. I thought what I'd do is I'd just take the June 2017 paper and just work through it um, as you might do. I haven't looked at the mark scheme, so I'll be working through this with you. You can see how I might approach the paper. I've chosen 2017 because we've done 2019 and 2018 in um, the sessions already. So, okay, you've got 90 minutes to do this paper, periodic table at the front, question about pink tap water, potassium permanganate, vivid purple colour, used as an oxidising agent to remove iron, manganese and sulphur, relies on the many possible oxidation states of manganese. In March 2017, residents of the Canadian town of Onaway found their water supplies had turned purple due to a leak of potassium permanganate solution into the water system. Fortunately, dilute solutions are not toxic. However, residents were advised not to drink the water. Write down the electronic configuration of manganese in terms of its subshells. So looking up on the periodic table, it's element number 25, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d5, and that should add up to 25, 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 25. The graph on the right shows the first 10 successive ionisation energies of manganese, um, suggests the highest oxidation state. So that would be forming the 1 plus ion, 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus, 5 plus, 6 plus, 7 plus iron there, removing 7 electrons, but then there is a jump before the 8th one. So we would suggest that the 7 plus is the highest oxidation state that you would see. Briefly justify your answer, uh, 7 valence electrons. So 4s2, 3d5, they're the valence electrons on the out. It's got 7 of them. Or maybe they're wanting us to say that there's a jump in the data. We wouldn't know without looking at the mark scheme. Potassium permanganate contains the manganate oxyanion, which there are covalent bonds between manganese and oxygen. Draw a dot cross diagram to illustrate the bonding in manganate, showing only the electrons in the outer shell. Okay, so we've got manganese, and that's got seven electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Clearly every oxygen wants two, elect two more electrons, um, and that does obey the rule. So there you go, that's got eight for that one. Double bond here would give that oxygen eight electrons. Double bond here would give that oxygen eight electrons. And what's gonna go on here? Well, let's presume that there is a single bond to the oxygen. And where does that come from? Well, that's the minus, isn't it? The anion. So our extra electron would go there. And that's quite similar to the chlorate anion that you guys did fairly similarly. So just a value for the bond angle in that. Well, actually, because all of these are drawn completely the same um, and the real structure would be sort of between one and two bonds between each oxygen. It's actually got four identical groups about the manganese. So it's going to be tetrahedral and the bond angles are going to be 109.5 degrees there because it's based on the tetrahedral anion. The whole thing there is negative, okay? It's actually spread out over all four oxygens. Potassium manganate is produced industrially from the mineral pyrolusite, a naturally occurring source of manganese 4 oxide. In the first step of KMNO4 production, pyrolusite is heated with potassium hydroxide in the presence of air, producing potassium manganate 8, uh, sorry, 6 and 1 other product. Write a balanced equation for this reaction. Hint, consider the oxidation states. Okay, so... Um, potassium manganate 6 is, if it's manganate 6, and that's 6 plus, 8 minus, so it must be like K2 
MNO4 there. Um, oh, manganese 4 oxide, sorry. So that is going to be MNO2. And potassium hydroxide going to that. And we've got to work out what the other product is going to be. So if the manganese is going from 4 up to 6, then that means something must be going down in oxidation state, um, something in the air, perhaps the oxygen. Um, so is there any chance we've got oxygen there, reacting there, and the other product is going to be water, perhaps. Can we make that fit? Um, so we've got two potassiums there, so two KOH, two potassiums, two potassiums, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, um, four, five oxygens on this side, two, three, four, so half O2 perhaps doing that. Um, the manganese has gone up to and one oxygen has gone down to from zero to minus two and that fits in terms of oxidation states as well. Yeah, what I was trying to work out, because obviously we had to do something with the hydrogen here, was whether or not that was going to form hydrogen or water and I think the hint considered the oxidation state suggests um, the oxygen there. Potassium manganate 6 is then dissolved in a solution of potassium hydroxide and converted into potassium manganate 7 by a process known as electrolytic oxidation. In this process, water is reduced to hydrogen gas. Remembering that reduction is the gain of electrons, write an ionic half equation for the reduction of water to hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. Okay, so it's a gain of electrons. So reduction of water, including electrons, going to hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. Okay, how can we make that work? So at the moment we've got two there and three there. Um, so if we had two waters, um, we could make two HO minus and we'd need two electrons then, yeah. So that works, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, two oxygens, two oxygens, charge of minus two on the left-hand side and charge of minus two on the right-hand side, cool. Write an ionic half equation for the oxidation of manganate six ions to manganate seven ions. Okay, so manganate six MnO4 2 minus. I think that's what it is, isn't it? So what we're we talking about up here, um, that's manganate seven up there. And we're told potassium manganate six, yeah, KmnO4. Okay, so. Okay, um, and that is going to manganate 7, MnO4 minus, and how's that happening? Oh, well, essentially, um, that must be releasing electron. That must, that's basically it. Uh, hence, or otherwise, write an equation for the conversion of aqueous potassium manganate 6 to potassium manganate 7. Okay, so the thing I'm worried about is what I want to do is just combine these two half equations here and say that, okay, well, we'll double that. So two of those, two of those, and two electrons, then we add them together. So 2MnO4 2 minus plus 2H2O forms H2 plus 2MnO4 minus plus 2OH minus. 
Um, the only thing I'm worried about is that that hydroxide is on the right hand side. Is that a problem? We've got a charge of 4 minus there. We've got a charge of 4 minus on the right hand side. That is my best guess at the moment. Um, and that's for that step. Where are we? That's for that step there. Write a balanced equation. Uh, aqueous solutions of potassium manganate 6 are only stable at high pH. At neutral pH, the substance disproportionates. Write a balanced equation for the disproportionation reaction. reduction project product is manganese 4 oxide so we've got manganate 6 MnO4 to minus um, and that disproportionates to form MnO2 and MnO4 minus So that's the reduction product, presumably that's the oxidation product there. Can we make that work? So if we've got two of those, what else are we going to be generating? Um, is it that we're generating hydroxide? Okay, so this is probably where I'd give up and go and have a look at the next bit. So let's have a look at the next bit. It's thought that a faulty valve controlling the addition of potassium manganate 7 was responsible for the purple water supply in Onaway. The exact concentration of the potassium manganate 6, sorry, 7 in the water supply has not been reported. Solutions are visibly coloured. The colour of solutions is quantified by measuring how much light is absorbed when light of a particular wavelength is passed. Absorbance A of a solution is given by A equals ECL. Um, where C is the concentration of the solution in moles per decimeter cubed, L is the depth of the solution through which the light is passed, and E is the molar adsorptivity for the particular compound. Okay, um, given that A has no units, and L is in centimeters, and concentration is presumably yet yeah, mole per dm cubed. Uh, so the units of E must be decimeters cubed per mole per centimeter cubed per sorry it's per centimeter so that when that is multiplied by centimeters and multiplied by moles per dm cubed that all cancels out so they must be the units decimeter cubed per mole per centimeter the graph on the right shows the absorbance of various solutions of potassium manganate 7 of different concentrations. Calculate for the value for the molar absorb absorptivity of potassium manganate at 530. Okay, so we know what the concentration is C here. And uh, we know that that's about what, 1 point, 1.1. Is the absorbance um, and the concentration was that and L was equal to one centimeter so therefore the E equals A over CL which equals 1.1 divided by 1 times by uh, 0.005 this is where I have the calculator. Which is two thousand two hundred and using the units decimeters cubed per mole per centimetre. 
what is the absorbance of a solution whose concentration is 0.05 mg per decimeter cubed? Okay. So we've got to convert that into moles per decimeter cubed. So KMnO4 potassium is 39 manganese is 55 plus 64 equals Hundred fifty eight grams per mole. So, therefore, the concentration is moles over volume. Sorry. So therefore moles equals mass over MR. The mass is 0 0.05 milligrams, so times 10 to the minus 3, divided by 158, which equals 0 0.05 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by 158 equals... 0. Oh, let's go for 3.16 times 10 to the minus 7 mole per diem cubed. And from that, here. So if that's concentration, A equals E, which we've worked out, 2,200, times by the concentration, which is 3.16 times 10 to the minus 7, times L, which is just 1, and that would be 0 0.0007. Oh, there's an absorbance there, no units. Sorry about that, rather annoying fly buzzing around there. Okay, so let's keep going. So KMnO4 uh, reacts with concentrated H2SO4 under carefully controlled conditions to form a manganese-containing species, compound X, with 49.5% manganese, and 50.5% O by mass. Mass spectrometry shows the empirical formula is also the molecular formula. Determine the molecular formula of compound X. Okay, so in 100 grams, 49.5 grams, divided by the mass of manganese, which is 55, equals 0.9 moles. And oxygen, 50.5 divided by 16 equals 3.15625. Okay, um, so that is the ratio of those things. There's nothing else, is there? No, it's just literally those two. So we've got to work out if there's any sensible ratio between those things. Typically, you divide both by the smallest. So that would obviously equal 1. Divide that by 0 0.9. And we get 3.5. And I think that's definitely getting us somewhere, isn't it? 3.5. So that's clearly a 2 to 7 ratio. So MN2. Oh, seven, and that seems sensible, doesn't it? Because if we consider that manganese forms seven plus and oxygen forms two minus, we absolutely can imagine 
and then 207 there, good. Write a balanced equation for the reaction of potassium manganate with concentrated H2SO4. All right, okay. So we've got KMnO4 plus H2SO4 forming Mn2O7. And let's presume that the rest of it um, is going to form water and potassium sulfate. So let's say K2SO4 and some form of water, H2O perhaps. So does that work? Well, obviously, if we've got K2SO4, we need two potassium manganates. Um, we've then got eight oxygens there. We've got seven, eight there. I think that works. Two potassiums, two potassiums, um, two manganese, two manganese, four, okay, eight oxygens in total on the left. Uh, sorry, no, 8, 12, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 2 hydrogens, 2 hydrogens. Yeah, I think that does work, actually. Um, suggest a structure for a molecule of compound X. Well, I think it's going to be very, very similar to the manganate iron in that we're going to have double bonds to all the oxygens. The only difference is that that oxygen in the middle is going to be a bridging oxygen. Instead of the negative charge, it's going to do that. Um, and that looks fairly straightforward to me. I'm here comparing this to things like V2O5, where I've seen similar structures, but it makes sense instead of the manganate with the minus there, that the two things are linked together. Calculate the, so compound X decomposes explosively to give MnO2 and O2 as the sole products. At 298K, the species involved have the following standard enthalpy changes of formation. Calculate the standard enthalpy change of the reaction for the decomposition of one mole of compound X at 298K, assuming that solid manganese dioxide forms in that reaction. Okay, so Mn2O7, one mole decomposing to MnO2. There must be two of those. And how many oxygens are left over? We've got seven on the left. Uh, we've got four there, so three left over. So that's one and a half O2. Uh, to calculate the enthalpy change of that reaction, well, um, on this side, remember delta F H or delta H from formation, delta R H. Let me get rid of that. So, delta RH, the enthalpy change of the reaction, for formation is product minus reactants. So, oxygen, oh, 1.5O2, uh, oxygen is zero because it's formed from elements. So, it's just 2 times minus 520. And then minus reactants here, which is minus 742. And that gives us a total enthalpy change of the reaction of 2 times 520 minus plus 742, which equals minus 298 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that is exothermic. I like the idea of it reacting explosively. Potassium manganate 7 is commonly used in the laboratory as an oxidizing agent in organic chemistry. For example, it readily oxidizes, oxidizes heptanol to heptanoic acid, shown above. An important precursor needed in the preparation of many organic compounds such as drugs, fragrances and flavorings. The equation for the oxidation of heptanol to heptanoic acid in aqueous conditions is that... Um, the overall yield of the reaction is typically 77%. Assuming this is the case and that a 10% excess of potassium manganate is used in the synthesis, what mass of potassium manganate is needed to make 300 grams of heptanoic acid? Okay, so we want to make 300 grams of that. Let's work out moles. So, in terms of the mass, formula mass, RFM, 
it is the seven carbons there are 14 hydrogens and there are two oxygens so 7 times 12 plus 14 plus 32 equals 130 grams per mole so 300 grams divided by 130 grams per mole equals 2.30769 moles okay so if the yield of the reaction is typically 77 percent then that means that that is 77 percent of what we actually need to aim to make so let's work out what 100 percent is so we're going to divide by 77 times by 100 so We would need to aim to make 2.997 um, moles of the heptanoic acid. Okay, uh, close enough to three, right? Um, and therefore, because it's a three to three ratio, no potassium manganate, three to two ratio, um, we would need where I've lost my pen so uh, that is a 3 to 2 ratio so that would mean we would need to divide by 3 times by 2 not surprisingly 1.998 of KMNO4 to make that but again we're told we need a 10% excess which equals, so times that by 1.1. I mean, I could do this roughly in my head, but I'm just gonna carry the numbers through as far as I can in the calculator. 2.198 moles of potassium manganate. Um, I can't remember whether we've actually worked out what the RFM of potassium manganate is before, but I'm gonna do it again here. It's 39 plus, 55 plus 64 that does look oddly familiar yeah 158 that was which equals 158 grams per mole so times those two together so 2.198 times 158 equals 347 grams well potassium permanganate is a common reagent the sodium salt is harder to produce and is considerably more expensive the supply of currently has one kilogram of solid potassium manganate seven costing 5420 whereas 500 mil of a 40 percent by mass aqueous solution of sodium manganate costs £67.80. Calculate how many times more expensive it would be to carry out the oxidation of heptanel using sodium manganate than potassium manganate. Okay. So I think we want to work out basically the price per mole. So let's do that. So one kilogram divided by potassium manganate, uh, KMNO4, 158, that's 1,000 grams, equals 6 6.32, 6.33 moles, and the price per mole so 60 sorry 54 pounds 20 divided by 6.33 equals 
eight point or let's do it in the nearest penny eight pounds fifty six per mole sodium manganate okay 500 mil of a 40% by mass aqueous solution costs that. Okay, so 40% by mass, uh, that means 40 grams in 100 mil. So in this 500 mils, uh, we have got, uh, I'm not being stupid, am I? 200 grams, okay? So 200 grams there. So 200 grams divided by sodium manganate, okay, 23 plus 55 plus 64 equals 142 grams per mole. So divided by 142 grams per mole equals, so 200 divided by 142 equals, 1.41 moles um, and so therefore 6780 divided by 1.41 the price of that is 48 pounds and 9p per mole so therefore, 48.09 divided by 8.56, it's going to be, yeah, it is about 5.6 times more expensive. Okay, that's the end of question one. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to quickly mark it and you can see where I did and didn't lose marks. Right. And I've got this way over here on a completely different screen. 1s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4, 3. yep, that's fine. And you allowed those in either order. Cool. Um, 7 plus was the right oxidation state there. Justify, jump in the data. Yeah, just be a bit more specific than that. 7 valence electrons. Yeah, absolutely. Just be a little bit more than that. Um, dot cross diagram, what I didn't do was I didn't have the brackets. So I should have put brackets around that and given a minus. So I might have only got one mark out of two there. But it was tetrahedral with a bond angle of 109.5. Balanced equations for the reactions. This was absolutely right. Half an oxygen plus 2KOH plus manganese dioxide forming two lots of potassium manganate seven, sorry, six, and water. Absolutely half quantities accepted. Don't penalise the lack of state symbols. Half equation for the reduction of water. Absolutely fine. Half quantities accepted. Don't penalise a lack of state symbols. Um, reaction half equation for the oxidation of potassium manganate seven. Yep, that was absolutely fine. Two manganate, or in, initially, of course, I only had one to one to one. Yeah, absolutely releasing that. Don't penalise lack of state symbols. Reaction for the production of potassium manganate seven. I was worried about this one, but actually, it's correct. Um, they've actually got it as two K two M N O four plus. 2H2O dot 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 but they say allow correct ionic equation which is what we've got here so manganate six, uh, manganate 6 plus water forming hydrogen and manganese manganate 7 and hydroxide I was worried with that being on that side but actually that's absolutely fine this one where I got stuck on um, manganate 7 uh, plus water actually is what you needed forming absolutely manganese dioxide and manganate there um, and hydroxide so that is formed in the disproportionation reaction there and I suppose we should have got that from the fact that only stable at high pH so the hydroxide inhibits reaction as it is a product. 
So think of Le Chatelier there. Um, so maybe that was the clue there that hydroxide was over there. And then when that's balanced, it's the fact that there are three of those two waters um, forming two, no, manganese dioxide, two of those and four hydroxides. I didn't get that, um, but not too bad. Drinking water, yep, decimeters cubed per mole per centimeter. Absolutely, I got that correct. The value of E, um, so depending on how accurate you were, they said allow anything in the region 2,200 to 2,300. So I got that correct. Um, moles per mole, yeah, cool. Um, the concentration, uh, except, yeah, 3.16 times 10 to the minus 7, absolutely. I got that. Um, and therefore the absorbance 0 0.0007 they said accept anything 6.6 .6 times 7.4 times 10 to the minus 4 which that is there was one mark for that and one mark for that moving on oh sorry did i miss a bit oh i did i missed this bit here oh, i missed both of those didn't i So I missed both of those, so I missed quite a few questions, unfortunately. Never mind, that's what happens in the paper. Moving on. Um, yeah, MN207 was indeed the correct answer for this. Um, the balanced equation, 2KMNO4, H2SO4, K2SO4, uh, water and and this compound X yeah absolutely um, that was right drawing a structure of compound X that was absolutely right there yeah no problem there standard enthalpy change of reaction minus 298 absolutely that was right mass of potassium manganate needed there was one mark for 2.30 here. Uh, there was one mark for rounding that up to work out the number of moles that you needed to attempt to make. There was one mark for getting down to here. And there was one mark for the final answer, 347 grams. So that was a lot of marks there for stuff that actually is fairly straightforward A-level chemistry. How many times more expensive? Uh, yeah, basically there was one mark for working out the cost per mole for each of those, um, which is right, and therefore it is 5.6 times more expensive. So I definitely got most of the marks there. Um, obviously I missed a couple of questions down here when I was battling the fly, and I didn't get this question here. Um, but overall, I've certainly got the majority of the marks on that question. Now, on to question two.